This is what we're going to need. The drawing. Some paint brushes. A few pens. Paint. A palette. I'm using a piece of cardboard for mine. Something spongy to make texture, but it's optional. And a piece of cardboard as backing, because the painting can get a bit wet. And also we don't want to mess. So I'm laying the picture on top of the uh, piece of white card. And I'm going to try and stick it in place with some tape. There we go. It's one corner and another. This is just to make sure it doesn't move around too much as I'm painting. Um, and also that gives it a nice backing so my table doesn't, um, so that my table is not a disaster after this. And here are my paint brushes. And everything is ready. I'm gonna Take some paint, put it on my palette or my piece of cardboard. I'm probably taking too much. Um, and so at first I thought I might outline the horse um, with some blue marker pens, but then changed my mind. So then I'm just going to start painting with blue. Um, because I want my horse to be blue like the night sky. And I am very bad at staying inside the lines. I tried to correct it there, but it uh, didn't work. So once I put my blue paint on, I'm also going to outline in black pen the lion skin on top of the horse that Selene is sitting on. Um, just to make sure it doesn't get muddled in when I continue painting the base layer. So this is just, again, so that the two don't flood in. So I'm going to mix blue and black on my palette because I don't like the blue I have. I want something darker because it is the night sky. So I'm going to put the blue on the darker blue as my base layer instead. And I'm going to be very careful around the lion skin so that... And I already went outside the lines. And now I'm going to take a smaller paintbrush uh, just to finish off that detail, which is something I should have done in the first place. And then maybe I wouldn't have gone outside the lines. But there we go. So I'm just going to do the nose and the face of the horse with this smaller paintbrush in this darker blue color. And I'm going to go over the edges of the lion skin as well. Serena is not using a saddle, she's using a lion skin because she's a goddess, she's allowed to. Okay, and then for the Cellini base layer, I'm going to use a mixture of a few different paints. I'm going to experiment with kind of what works best for me from the colors I have. And once again, I am putting way too much paint on um, my palette, but I'm going to mix. I'm going to try with this yellow and then I'm going to mix it with the gray to see what happens. Might also mix the yellow with the black just to give me a nice dark gray. So this is the yellow mixed with the grey. And this is the yellow mixed with the black and I think that's just too dark. Um, so I'm going to go back to the original grey. And I do this a lot when I paint. I just mixed all the different paints I have to see what works best for me. And I will cover Cellini in this a light grey. And I'm just going to do the finishing touches with a different paintbrush. So this is a more cut paintbrush it has a very edgy edge 
and um, it will let me hopefully to do the top of her dress without going outside the lines and into her skin and I'm just going to smooth out the colors because I did put three different colors shades of grey on um, so that they kind of look like one base layer and I'm gonna color the skin with the same grey the lion skin with the same grey and the horse's hair and tail with the same grey as well So I'm just going to give it a very, very light tap with the grey on the tail. And then I'm going to take a bit more grey and put it on the hooves. Hooves? The horse's hooves. I already mocked up one of them. You can see one of them is completely blue and you can't see it's a hoof. So that's why I'm taking them out in different colour here. With a tiny bit of the grey. So now we're going to paint the this the moon seas actually. We're gonna take a little bit of black paint or dark blue paint that we've made before. And I'm just gonna randomly place a few craters which are like just darker splodges for now that are not super round. They're like the sea. They just have craggly edges. So do what you like. Put as many as you like. If you see the surface of the moon, it has many seas on it. There's no water in the seas. Um, it's just what the astronomers call them. I'm gonna put another one over here, kind of covered by the shawl she has. You can put one on the shawl if you want. And another one. And I think three is a nice number. I took too much paint, so now I'm gonna take some paint off my brush. And just smooth that out. And now don't worry because this is not the finished effect. So you'll have time to refine them later. Now we just want the darkest part to be put on the dress. Okay. So now I'm going to take a lighter grey. So again, the grey with the black mixed in and do the edges of the craters because we want to give it the idea of um, gradient of color, so it's not just black on gray, it's much more delicate. So that's what I'm gonna take, just straight gray, so again one lighter shade, and do the edges again with what is now my favorite brush. So I'm gonna try my best to just get the edges with that grey. Now don't worry if you mess up here, There's this is a kind of painting where actually messing up can work quite well in the end. Um, because again, we're trying to make, they say the edges of the craters, the edges of the seas. Um, and a sea is not a square. It doesn't have very straight lines. Now you can wait for this to, for the first layer of the sea to dry before you put the edges on, but I'm impatient, so I'm just gonna go ahead and do it. And see now they're already looking more like the sea rather than just a black splotch. And now I'm gonna use a clean, dry paintbrush to just incorporate those edges in, so to make sure there's no stark differences. Um, you can also do this with a sponge or. As I said, just with a clean, dry paintbrush. And then I'm going to leave it to dry. I'm going to move on to the next element, for which we need white paint. And now we're going to move on to the craters. Now the moon has over 9,000 craters, so put as many on as you want. And all I'm doing, the first step is just 
white dots. The crater is basically an impact site, so it's something hit the moon, and so it's not just a clean white dot. You want to smoosh it a bit in places and make sure there's a clear center, but we'll do more smooshing in a minute as well. But here all I'm doing is just making the surface of the, of the impact site bigger. And then I'm going to take more white paint on the small paintbrush. And just do a dot, 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 and dot in the center of each one of the ones I made. Now is the fun part. I've covered my work area. I'm going to take this small paintbrush with white I'm gonna hold one end of it and then strike the other end of it with my finger so that it makes a splatter effect so you need to take lots of paint actually not lots of paint a good amount but not too much paint on your small paintbrush to make tiny craters but also add more texture and at the same time you can take some yellow paint or this light yellow paint I have and do the same for the horse because uh, he should be like the night sky and therefore covered with stars and now i took a little bit too much paint on there and it created a massive splotch on his leg which i'm gonna clean up a little bit and now i'm gonna use the sponge to dab the craters a little bit so to make sure they're not just stark white points especially a few of them where there's too much paint um that's some of them I'm just going to leave behind. And I think that's good. I think that's me done with the craters. What's the next step? Take some more grey paint. And finish her dress. So now I'm noticing kind of the imperfections. I'm just going to put some colour into the top of her dress. And there's a spot on the knee and I'm going to take some of the dark blue. Yes, I'm taking some of the dark blue now. And I'm going to add um, some more touches to the tail of the horse. So I want the horse to have like spots of different colors in his tail. So I'm going to take this straight brush and just dab very like holding it almost vertically i'm just going to dab um, next to the lines of his tail i'm going to do this with a variety of colors so i'm doing a uh, dark blue first just in a few places not too much not too little you kind of get a feeling for it try not to overdo it and that's kind of the the look i'm going for i'm going to do the same with his mane with his very short hair just a few blue dabs with my paintbrush he's a mono horse he's allowed to be fancy so i'm gonna add some more color to it i'm gonna put some of the light yellow i have and some more of the pale gray and later on i'm gonna add some more color probably okay now it's time for the shiny part i have some gold paint and some shiny blue paint but here is whatever you have so you might have some glitter you might have some shiny nail polish i have shiny paint but feel free to be creative and just use whatever you have and all i'm doing with this is i'm gonna add some shiny blue dabs to the tail of the horse to his mane but also to the craters i made before because she is a moon goddess so i feel like her dress should be glittery um so i'm gonna do the same with the gold paint i'm gonna add some to the dress of the moon goddess because again she's a goddess she's shiny And then I've decided that my lion skin is going to be gold as well. So I'm just going to take the gold paint and put a little bit of a sparkle on the lion skin. 
and a little bit on the veil that she has. I think it's a lion skin, I'm not sure actually. Some sort of um, furry animal. And now she has on the top of her head a diadem with the um, shape of the moon, a moon crescent. So I'm going to take some of my gold paint and try to get that. It's very small, so it's difficult. Okay, now it's time for her hair. So I have light pink or lilac and a uh, more purple color and that's kind of the color I want her to have um, so I'm just gonna go with that and then I'm gonna take the darker one to give her some strands because people's hair is really um, one uniform color so I'm gonna give her, her some variety in her look and the next thing I'm gonna do is I don't really like this color or this light lilac she has so I'm going to mix the the blue, the shiny blue I have, and the purples, and mix them together to give her some nice strands of shiny color. See if it's gonna work. I like it. I think it's working. Gonna decide that you can decide otherwise. But you can see from a close up the, the bits of gold I added now. There's just a bit more yellow. So now I have to decide what color to paint her shoulders and her face so her body and maybe gold maybe gold will work we'll see but the gold paint i have is very thin so it doesn't leave a lot of color it just does a little bit of a it's like a shimmer more than a gold color but let's see i'm gonna change my mind i think I don't know if I like this. Okay, so I'm gonna take the blue. This blue is too dark. I don't know why I took the blue. I'm gonna try and do my best now to kind of spread it as much as I can to make sure it's just a light blue and I'm doing a very bad job of staying in the lines and covering the, her entire body as I do. Even if I'm using the small paintbrush. And she's blue. And I'm gonna add some gold on top of the blue. To make her shiny. Okay, adding some more details. I've decided actually the lion or whatever furry animal skin is, is going to be purple. Or it's going to be purple and light purple mixed together with the blue to give me a yet different shade of purple. And then I'm gonna cover it with something shiny. Something shiny? Although there's shine already in the purple, I suppose. But I'm also going to add this purple to the horse's tail because I like it. I really like this shade. I think that's her done.